Time now for our Wall Street Week daily segment. The host of Wall Street Week, David Weston, joins us as he does every day. And this is a big week here in yeah. New York City, where the New York City Marathon yeah. is set to be run here. I I'm not sh you're not in it, right? I am still okay, definitely this year. Okay, definitely maybe next year. Yeah, yeah. But of course, a lot of us are going to be watching from the sidelines. It's not easy to get yeah. in. There was a piece of the no, Bloomberg today that said it's no. harder to get in the New York City Marathon than in Ivy League schools. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so it's hard. So I wouldn't have made the cut anyway, but I'm not doing it. But we have somebody who really knows about this terribly well. He's Jim Weber. He's Brooks Running CEO. So, Jim, welcome. Welcome. Good to have you here. This must be a big event for you, being in a running shoe company. So give us a sense of how important this marathon is and how it fits in to the overall market for running shoes today. You know, the racing side of things is a dedicated runner's game day. And so the, the marathons, the 5Ks, the 10Ks, they happen in all the local communities, but this one's special, right? It's one of the greatest marathons in the world, almost 50,000 runners. That's a very large race. And of course, the whole city comes out. So this is one of the best marathons in the world, and the whole industry shows up here, too. And, of course, we have a lot of customers running on Sunday. It's a great event. Well, what percentage will be running your, wearing your shoes? Well, today? last year they have high-speed cameras, so we knew last year that over 20% of the whole field was running on Brooks. So we might have 10,000 runners out there on our product tomorrow, or so on Sunday. 50,000 runners is a lot of runners. But yes. overall in the market, is yeah. it growing? Is the pie getting bigger overall? Overall, it is. It's been growing 2 to 3% a year for 30 years. And COVID, it spiked and it came down a bit, but it's, it's up again this year. Race participation is up again this year. So I think there were about 400,000 people in the United States that will run a marathon this year. I'm curious, when you talk about customers, obviously we're talking about the serious runners, as yeah. David pointed out. If you're in the New York City Marathon, you yeah. got to be serious here. But obviously, that yeah. can't be your whole market if you want to grow as a company. Yeah. You have to appeal to maybe slobs yeah. like me who <laughs> maybe just want to run on the treadmill for, you know, 30 minutes and feel good about themselves. You know, yeah. that's what makes running yeah. is such a unique sport yeah. because it transcends the sport, even, even a marathon like this, mm -hmm. and it's an investment in yourself. It's health and wellness and fitness and mental clarity. Mm -hmm. So for um, 40 to 50 million people run for fitness reasons, some to compete, but mm -hmm. the, the, the fitness runner is the biggest part of the market. And of course, in, in, what's unique about our sport too is they need the best product. Yeah. So it's a really unique sport in that regard. I'm curious though, I mean, Brooks has kind of staked their claim on that, on that more serious mm -hmm. runner here. Meanwhile, you have companies like Nike, which of course has just broadened out mm -hmm. and they, a lot of their shoes they sell, they know are never gonna uh, be used for running yeah. or athletics, any yeah. kind, they're fashion statements. Yeah. And I'm wondering, have you ever thought about moving Brooks in that direction? You know, it's interesting because the performance running silhouette has got more engineering in it, more de engineered materials design, biomechanical design. So we've been doing that for 50 years, and it turns out to be a fabulous walking shoe. It's a great hiker trail running shoe, and it's a great comfort shoe for people that have foot pain. So the, the, the performance running silhouette, the secret is, is we've always had walkers and casual people in our product because of the comfort quotient. Mm -hmm. So now what we're seeing is this category, these premium products is, is bigger than it's ever been because of those second and tertiary uses. And so, yeah, that now what's happening in 24 is we're expanding our color assortment of all these key styles so that we call it wearable, wearable running. Um, I call it an airplane shoe, so I came here. <laughs> I came here with only Brooks shoes. Basically, it's, it's an airplane shoe, so I, you can go to a casual dinner with it, and then you go to the gym and you run. So that's what's happening: wearable colors. Pick up on Romain's comment about engineering, or I'll call yeah. it technology. How important is that in what you're doing, and particularly in gaining market share against yeah. some of your big competitors? It, yeah, it's critical. This is the glycerin, and it's got a nitrogen inducted midsole technology in it. Bottom line: best cushioning we've ever had in a shoe. 40% lighter and more durable. You'll get more miles out of it. So shoes are getting better, and it's just exciting. There's a lot of innovation coming into our, our category. How important is it that you have somebody win the marathon wearing Brooks? Because I think a lot of the pro runners actually tend not to run Brooks. Is that wrong? Serious runners do, but not so much the pro people. Well, you know, we count market share and shoes on feet in every category, but our own Des Linden won Boston several years ago, and she just, she just won the Masters record in women's marathoning at Chicago a month mm -hmm. ago. She'll be at the Olympic trials um, in a couple months. And Josh Kerr just became the world champion in the 1500 meter running in Brooks. So, yeah. so we don't have as many as some of the other brands, but you know, it's all about for us, you know, all we do is run. So we're, we're, we want front of the pack, back of the pack. We want everybody on our shoes. I am curious. I mean, just looking at this shoe right now, and I think all three of us are old enough to remember when you know, running shoes were just kind of these flat oh, yeah. things. Yeah, like, yeah, no yeah, yeah. And it kind of involved where there's all this 
cushion here. I mean, what goes into, I guess, uh, the testing yep. and the science behind that that leads you to believe that this is a better way to run? So 10 years ago, I would have yeah. been here with a minimalist barefoot shoe. Mm -hmm. And now we're in maximalist cushioning. Yeah. It, there's trends that come through our category. Because right, I was told that, that we're supposed to all run barefoot and that the, the cushioning <laughs> is And it wasn't there, but, true. So. Yeah. Here's what came out of that. We, yeah. we went into the labs. We did clinical studies with hundreds of runners. There was no clinical research on barefoot cushioning. Here's what we found. Everybody has natural habitual joint motion and we're all different. Mm. Cushioning is timeless for most people. They don't want to feel the road. They don't want to feel their feet, but everybody's unique. We're and we're and that's, yeah. Sorry, we're mindful you're a Berkshire Hathaway company. Warren Buffett always talked about having a moat around your business. Yes. How do you have a moat around that shoe? You know what? It starts with runnability for us, fit, feel, and ride. We're always trying to earn the second shoe. So if a runner, especially a frequent runner, they know at mile 20 if they'll ever buy that shoe again. And it needs to be trustable at mile 26. And if we can, we can win that customer over, we, it's gonna be great for everybody else too. So we all know this business in some ways, but I don't know it as a business. What are the margins like? How capital intensive yep. is it? Is it a good business? Is it a cash business? Well, I think it's a great business. And, and I think Berkshire's happy with it too. <laughs> It, you know, I think that our industry is, is footwear is a good business, and especially if you can create loyalty around your product and, and get a repeat customer. So this category is special. I think it's a great business, um, but it's not easy. It's very competitive, and, and it's very inventory intensive.